Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch South. This is Sunset Beach, North Carolina. We're down here visiting our family and having a little vacation. But I want to make a video for you today and it's the song called When I Fall in Love, a very popular song written by Victor Young. And I'm going to be playing it in the style of Bill Evans. Now this is not Bill Evans' arrangement. I wrote the arrangement, but I use techniques of Bill Evans. And I'm going to be explaining those to you in a tutorial after I play it. I'm going to play it through and take a solo and I'm using a backing track, I'm using an electric piano and some different equipment here. So here we go with a great song called When I Fall in Love.
Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch South, lads and lassies. We're in North Carolina. This is our vacation home with our families down at Sunset Beach. And I'm having a different setup down here. I have an electric keyboard, a digital keyboard called the Roland RD300NX. I've got a Pro FX40 mixer and a Vixia movie camera for the overhead. So you're going to have two views. And I want to do something for you today about Bill Evans playing. Now, his style. And I've broken it down into three categories. Now, I got to meet him and hear him play live a number of times. And even my trio opened for him on one of his outdoor concerts in Hartford years ago. So at any rate, I've learned a lot from Bill Evans. He's one of my major influences. And I want to talk about three aspects or three concepts of his playing. Number one, his harmonic and melodic concepts, which are, it's always very well balanced between the two hands, so that you always hear the melody coming out strong. And then he has all these subtle things that he does. And number two, his phrasing and his rhythmic aspect. How he executes a phrase and, and his concept of rhythm within a phrase. And, and how, he's, how he's playing the melody and adding fills. And then thirdly, his touch and use of dynamics. He has a unique sound, and a lot of it has to do with the way he uses dynamics. So I'm going to try to touch on those three main aspects of his playing. His harmonic melodic concept, his phrasing and rhythmic aspect, and his touch and dynamics. So here we go. Now I suggest you download this score from my website. There's no charge for it. I wrote the arrangement, it's inspired by Bill Evans, and I'm going to explain the concepts. The first thing we start out with in the introduction with a signature sound of his, which are diminished chords with major sevenths, like this. Really nice sound. Now, if you just played the root and the major seven, they'd sound pretty dissonant, like this. But you put those, the diminished chord in, and then add the major seven, you get a very interesting sound that is the signature sound of Bill Evans and it's played against a B flat pedal tone which would be the five of the key we're in. We're in the key of E flat, three flats, so B flat seven would be the dominant chord. So that's really a B flat seven flat nine, that voicing. But you see there's a diminished in there with a major seven. So it's like an A flat diminished to an A diminished to a B diminished major seven to a C diminished major seven. It's really a really interesting sound. He, he uses this sound on uh, his song, Spring Is Here. And I have a, have a video of that. So here's an aspect of his rhythm now. To that chord, and then nice resolution to the one chord. Now we're right into spread voicings. Now, if you're playing this with a trio, you might want to keep it like here, just where I wrote it. But if you're playing it solo, you might want a bigger sound so you can spread it out. And a tense in the left hand. You see, so now he has he has chord substitutions right away, like the E flat and the D flat now, six nine. That's like a tritone substitute. It's just creating a bass line down to the C7, and now the C7 has a sharp line in it, which is another signature reharm of, you know, upper extension type of chord, upper structure chord. You know, if you play a C chord major and put an E flat chord, like stack an E flat on top of it, you're going to have the sharp nine in there. So you have to have a major third and a minor third on top, which is really nine sharp, okay? So this is voiced like this. That's another signature sound, or core, signature chord of Bill Evans. And then I put the sus in there, you see? So it's backwards, you usually hear the sus first, and you could do it that way, but I did it this way, because I wanted that sharp nine. And then the, and then the sus, and now here's a tritone substitute, the B, and I have videos on that explaining tritone substitute. You just take it for now. But I mean, I'm not going to go through every chord, but I am going to point out certain important chords and what we call stack chords or upper structure chords. 
I'm going to point those out for you now. Okay, in measure 8, there's a G13 flat 9. Now that's a signature Bill Evans upper structure chord. And you can think of it as a G7 on the bottom and an E on the top, E triad on the top. Um, I'm voicing it. In this particular case, that's how it was voiced. So it's right in the melody, you see. So you have the 13 here and the flat 9 here. But the interesting way to find this chord is to take any dominant 7th, play just the root in the 7th, and then from that root go up to the 6th step and play the E chord. You can invert it like that or play it up here. All these inversions are going to be the same thing. So if it was a C chord, you play a C7, go up to the 6th step, it'd be an A. That's how you could get it. So it's an easy way to find it. An F, F7 chord, go up to the D. That's that chord. Sometimes they're just triads, like, like this would be F against the D. So they could also be called slash chords. This could be called G7, or actually E slash G7. So after the slash is the lower part of the left hand, before the slash is the right hand. Now, another Example of that is in measure 910. We have the this figure. He has these. Um, I wrote this, so I have these. This kind of thing he would do. He would do these fills. The melody is just. The melody goes so. Uh, so you take it from. Uh, I put a fill in there, which he does these inner harmony fills like and this tritone substitute see so that's an embellishment it's kind of like a little improvising uh, off of the melody there's your 13 flat 9 chord again so you see in this case it's a B flat 7 it's sixth step would be G, don't have that right, do I? Um, yeah, G. So that's a G chord. Inverted first, second inversion. So there you have it again, the same chord. Uh, these mics are really good. You can hear, this is not a soundproof room, so you can hear bird noises or people talking outside or whatever. It picks up everything. Uh, another one of Bill Evans' concepts, devices, whatever you want to call it, is to mix up the voicings throughout constantly. He doesn't stay with just spread voicing for a period of time before he changes maybe to like octaves and, and rootless chords in, in the right hand and, and he'll, I mean in the left hand with his octaves in the right, or he'll change octaves as well. Like for instance, um, right at the beginning here we have changes the harmony here. Then I have this, and they go up to the upper octave, and with arpeggiated movement in the left hand. Then down, actually I played it up, then down. And it's changing octaves, changes up the sound, it makes it go somewhere, it just doesn't stay, stay static in one place. So he'll mix it up, he'll use upper structure chords, he'll use octaves, changing the register and also the rootless chords. A good example on measure 25, I use uh, measure 25 is a good example of uh, rootless chords. I didn't write too many rootless chords on this because even though I'm playing with a backing track, I want to make this arrangement a, a solo piano arrangement, so I use them more sparingly. But then I right on it, my skin set two five went right into about block chords. And octaves in the upper register to take me.
me to that melody note. Then changing the register again, changing the voices to spread. Big spread, then rootless. Now here's a drop two. kept it going there. Could have done something like that, but I wanted to go to the A flat minor chord, so I just did the drop two for the first two beats here. So that's really this chord, um, those chords with the second note on the bottom here, down an octave. I have videos on that if you need to look it up. It's a nice sound, real cool. So that's a pretty sound. kind of sound. But I did this. I wanted that minor, A flat minor major chord there. And then this, there's that augmented sharp five against the sharp nine again. Sharp five, sharp nine. The same thing here sharp 5 and sharp 9, then then resolving it, then a 6-9 chord there for what would be the tritone substitute. And they're here, flat 9 with the sharp 11. Now this cycle, instead of going 1, 6, 2, 5, I'm going up a minor third, then up a fourth, and then up a fourth. So well, that's an interesting transition there. Or, um, I want to touch on, I touched on the filler, filler type things. These, uh, that's measure nine, and that's, that's all a fill. Um, so, and then there's another fill on measure 12, but it's in the left hand. echoing the intro. Another nice chord there on the sharp nine with a flat five. So sharp nines with sharp fives, sharp nines with flat fives. Flat five would be the same as the sharp eleven. And then, you know, some of the things I would point out would be, well, I talk about the multiple octaves, changing the octaves, and the, and the filler lines. Uh, but I didn't talk much about the rhythm in the right hand versus in the left. So a lot of times you, 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 I'm not playing this literally the way it's written. I'm taking some rhythmic liberties with it. Uh, like for instance, let's take uh, measure 15. of how we would use dynamics. Um, you would go from loud to soft immediately. So like you'd, ha you'd have something like this. Then chain the octaves. Then it would get sense of dynamics, of being able to play loud and soft, give it so much more expression. And that's one of the things that I'm learning more from listening to Bill Evans, that he has this real control of his touch, which is, he gets from his classical training.
contrast in dynamics. And that's one of the things that separates him from a lot of the other pianists that don't do that as much. They play on one level, maybe loud, soft, or they play a loud passage, soft passage. He, he does loud to soft from note to note or from phrase to phrase. He can change it up. Like, that's what Mark Johnson told us when we played uh, the opening for him in Hartford. He said that Bill Evans can play louder and softer than anybody's ever heard. So his dynamics were one of, one of his um, central points within his playing, if you really study it and listen to it. And if you, and if you learn to do that, you're really going to be a lot better player. And uh, that's what I'm trying to learn more of now. This, this arrangement really is the culmination of things that I've learned about Bill Evans. So it's, it, it's his um, use of diminished chords, reviewing now, mixing up the voicings, block chords, spread voicings, upper extensions, drop to, you know, the... I used uh, locked hands. Well, measure 22, you could do it there. That's locked hands because the two hands are playing the melody note. Uh, melody notes. Okay, I measure 20, you're going to see locked hands technique. Go take your head of it. Right there. See, the right hand and, and left hand are playing the same notes an octave apart. That's the locked hands technique. So I tried to get all these in there. I got the locked hands, I got the drop two voicing, just that one little place. Upper structure chords, a lot of that. Um, some rootless voicings, and then changing octaves using bigger chords in the right hand combined with the left hand more spread out. Uh, a lot of filler, a lot of embellishments, you know, a lot of filler lines. I played those for you. Um, and the dynamics and, of course, the phrasing and the rhythm aspect of the two hands. That's a typical kind of thing that Bill Evans would do where his hands are independent of each other and yet complementing each other. It's one of the, he, he was a master of that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope I can put it together so it makes sense. I'm not rambling all over the place, but download the score, study it, write to me if you have questions, and I'd love to hear your comments and um, see what you think of this setup that I have down here in, uh, in, South, in North Carolina. We're heading to South Carolina to see my sister next week. So signing off, I'll be a sign off. Coming Take right four. Up. Signing off from Sunset Beach, North Carolina, Jazz Ranch, down south. Until next time, please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get your comments. I will always respond if you give me time. Here's a little bit of the view from the deck, and I'll give you a shot of the sunset as we leave. Until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend up there, Hermie Dressel, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.